Good evening. I'm Tina. This is to the interweb. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to this channel. I am... Well, that's the first time I referred it to this rather than my. Does that mean I'm starting to... Well, I think I'm attempting to become more aloof with my work. I mean, I just came to the realization that the frequency has increased when it comes to my practice but I was fearing the fact that well not the fact but it seemed like I was doing my tarot cards like every day on film and I was just all stacking up so I try very hard not to do them in the here and now it's almost self-defeating it's giving me some psychological trip trick maybe that I am finding any excuse whatsoever to distract myself from from completing something and I feel like it's like this very tiny granular devil energy that's trying to tell me I'm creating obstacles for myself that's really what it is to give reason to not finishing a full cycle you know what I mean like I'm just stacking things up and so it, I'm perpetuating this constant karmic cycle within myself of not being able to learn this lesson to finish something <laughs> more efficiently. I have to become more efficient at that. It's not to say that I'm not getting better because I am. And so anyway, okay, before I put this away, I am using the Yudes Picard Tarot of 1908. You see that? I don't know what kind of a box it comes in, so I have to throw it in this vintage old custom jewelry box or something. I believe they were trimmed, but look. I can handle them, but look. They're, they're, so they're pretty good cardstock. For one, here's the devil energy. Just the lovers entrapped, ensnared. <laughs> and this could be like, you know, what's the hold up inside of you if you're not in a relationship? What's preventing you? Oh, it's the discord within? Oh, oh, okay, now I get it, cool. No, not really. At least we identified it, so that's cool. But <clears throat> the animus and the anima within, that there has to be a balance. So if you're doing well in one department, then it's just like they go hand in hand. So I don't know how else to say this, but they're in union. You see this? Oh, I don't have any crystal here. But um, you see how there's a ring here, like of commitment and matrimony. Well, hello, hello again. What I was trying to convey to you is the devil card in this. Oh, my goodness. I just wanted to leap out and say something. Uh, okay. Give me a second. What was that? I have a hard time telling. This looks like it's the four. Oh, snap. It is a four of wands. This card just like spilled out from the middle and it did all of this. Okay. And this was on the top of it. It's the four of wands after looking at this. So there's a hold up, right? Don't mind me. I know I'm tired. I know I need some more sleep. I try to find it in the middle of the day. I, I'm just at that point within the awakening process that I wake up many times throughout the day. And uh, you know what I'm talking about if you're going through the same thing. So I see the masculine and the feminine aspects here. You can see that here in the fiery top. That's almost like a Leo-like um, quality. Then we have the feminine here. I don't know why her torch is smaller, but this is more like a doe-like creature. Mm. Um, one more in union with um, nature, so that would be more of the feminine. Um, but anyway, whatever the case may be, it's a masculine feminine within that it, it's verified here through the ring of commitment. Mm -hmm. um, both are bonded. So if there's an imbalance on one side, okay, let's say we'll speak more of the masculine aspect in societal terms, okay? They uh, get entrapped and snared in addictions, in sins of the flesh, lust, let's say, okay? Or like greed. Whatever way we try to legitimize any ill doing, right? What is the seed of intent? Is it, are we excusing it for practicality? It just makes sense, the efficiency of things to make life easier to, like having your cake and eating it too, right? Whatever we validate, create excuses to 
the deeds that incur imbalances. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little fragmented here in my fluency. Just bear with me. <laughs> Whatever we make up excuses for. So this is the addictions, yeah? Ensnared by the tangible world right? because they just make sense. Okay, so we're talking about maybe imbalance here. Well, um, that if that's inaccessible, like if we are draining out our energies into the devil energy of here, it's going to affect us just the same. Okay, just because one side is balanced and tame, it doesn't mean that you like you're in the good as far as your manifestations. That this is self sabotage almost in this aspect because we see this matrimony, this commitment, your ride or die on the within right whether you like it or not both are bound together it's just a matter if they're bound together by like their hands or by a chain a rope like a noose right something that's meant to strangle you mm -hmm. if one runs and the other one's going to be you know choked because they're in unison same thing so the feminine aspect let's see um, maybe the intuitive side letting her thoughts reign over her on the misconceptions like jumping to conclusions on a lack of trust you know in the world in other people it's it's really all the same bond really maybe over nurturing um smothering a situation wanting to nurture it to its demise almost like the that obsessive energy of receptivity maybe like hey i'm watching too many I'm binging on like whatever I'm watching or taking in. And the, the really important thing though is that this is a gentle devil card. Do you know why? I mean, okay, green can um, mean of jealousy. It could mean of life. It could also mean in angelic terms, um, which this is an angel, right? It's a fallen angel, but you now some of the angels embody each other's aspects. So green is the color of Archangel Raphael, which is the healer of relationships. Now, this here, um, when you look at this, okay, this is like karmic stuff. Soul ties, okay? Karmic relationships are soul relationships, soul family relationships, okay? Now, when you look at that, then you think, hey, okay, well, if one side is imbalanced, then it um, directly holds on to the other, impacts the other, in fact. So it's this healing aspect of bringing together, keeping each other in check, like a notice. Um, one noticing the other side, you're bound to the other side. So it's a blessing in disguise to be in, a, in the situation where your awareness is pulled to the other side mm -hmm. for healing. This is justice, bringing the lovers into court to resolve to see their own, almost like a mirroring, yeah? To check in each other. But then to see this come out, the Four of Wands, this is victory in the domestic front. This is your 11-11 homecoming, happy family celebration energy. This is your Three of Cups that magnified and multiplied within whatever celebration comes into the home front. You see this abundance as though there's an overhead view of a crop. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like Mandela-like, um, sacred, peaceful perspective as far as joyful abundance. And you have a sleeping lion on the bottom, which tells me that was a very effortful manifestation. And to defeat one's own demons is, um, whew. I wanted to share something with you. <laughs> I forgot what it was. But I was, oh gosh, okay. Look what came out first off. Ace of Wands. This could mean several things if you just look at it as standalone. When we're having conversation here. Uh, okay, primarily, like, uh, the, this has a frisky meaning. <laughs> it's phallic, right? But um, when you take that into context, it's like <clears throat> going hard at whatever you're doing. You should have all the confidence in the world. Because mm -hmm. you got this. You literally got it. The picture is showing us that we got this. <laughs> so I've been living in doubt for the past, I don't know, a few hours. <laughs> going back to old cycles. And it's just a reiteration of the lesson that we heard yesterday. 
which was transitionary state of letting one foot in the door through the portal of this uh, transformation process, opening up this portal because of your cooperation and still having one foot out the door. It's almost like temperance, the recalibrating, the rebalancing of self um, coming into new terms. And it's just that conflict resolution within that's kind of holding you up, that hesitancy, that slow motion gesture of entering upon a new um, world, which is in fact new horizons. And yeah, let me go ahead. Oh, I can't do it. Mm. Okay, this is about, and by the way, this also came out too. You're going to see that later, okay? So, you see this, the fire, okay? That's not just depicting whenever you're holding the wand, because the wand is there regardless of whatever is depicted here. You could be holding a paper clip and it's the same effect because this fire is part of you. This is an implication because the hand is coming through here. Actually, there's two messages here. The flames here uh, that you are the phoenix. The wand is just for other people who don't really understand this great big ball of fire that you are one in command of your life, of your unison with the world that's one two three pentacles here when we look at three of pentacles we see working together mm -hmm. partnership in business mm -hmm. um, and that's basically harmonization with the world mm -hmm. with the universe and then we see that because this global consciousness Christ consciousness three pentacles leading up to that saying from um, as above so below that three pentacles unison that harmonization of passion right and also one two three and then that fourth one can also be considered like a crowning ace of pentacles which is totaling to four which is like ownership stability it can also mean protectiveness but you see that there's a fierceness in here with the second meaning with being able to exercise your power that in any fire in any situation like a tower moment that you are going to save yourself you're going to emerge from the flames right holding your truth your power mm -hmm. in your spirit your way of life so you're going to emerge from there it's like baptism by fire so that's like the second or third meaning to it so the fire also is an implication of leo that manifestation quality mm -hmm. so i'll just say that's the formal third meaning to this i feel like they're all applicable here but you take what you want i just noticed that the more i dig into this these readings that i find the most answers rather than going from reader to reader that they actually at this point act as validation to whatever I've, I'm encountering, but mine is more refined to whatever I'm dealing with. So hopefully this will give you a different angle um, and give you confidence that when you are doing your own divination, which also includes following your intuition, that you'll be able to trust in your answers and identify whether it's for the highest good or for your highest ego, right? Your highest self, your ego, right? I, higher self, that was not a good way to put it, but um, I think you understand what I mean. But this holds a lot of meaning, especially after getting the devil and then the four of wands and then this. All awesome cards so far. And the devil just really means like an opportunity for a rebirth to um, rise above your inner demons. Mm -hmm. So this one is, I think, four, five. Oh my gosh, we have the ten of cups too. I thought this was just like the world or something. I don't, I, or the Wheel of Fortune, that's what I thought it was. But you see, it's also the Mandela-like quality, but it's also like some a daisy. So daisies are very resilient and common, yes. And Ten of Cups is just like having everything. Like, you know, if I had to make a wish, like coming out of this fire, like it's like, ping, I want that. I want that. Can I have that? Can I have that spirit? What do I need to do to work this out uh, with you? Because this looks pretty awesome to me. I'm all about that, right? Everybody's all about that. <laughs> do you see this? The number 10. How cool is that? Mm. Yeah, that's very, very abundant. 
Mm -hmm. Ooh, something else I'm seeing here. This is a clear sign. You will have to look closely to examine what the true Ten of Cups means when it comes to the agenda of the divine. Yeah, this is the unification of ten different cups. Ten different aces of cups. Mm -hmm. That's what we see. So this means, as a leader, you are to represent for the divine union of the community. You are meant to create a new world of leaders that are bonded in abundance. That's what I'm seeing because the patterning is almost like the Seven of Cups energy that each one depicts a different one. That's the concept behind it. But being that it's Ten of Cups, it's the ace for each one. So this is like a very magnified version of the Ten of Cups. Mm -hmm. I like how this is reading so far. We got a Ten... That's awesome. Oh, am I supposed to read these? Let's just read them, okay? So we have the Page of Cups, an offer of love. That could be an initiating factor of self love. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to start taking care of myself or start taking care of relationships that really matter to me. And I'm going to offer my cup truly. Because look, that's, that's go getting. That's taking the reins and making the decision to. To offer that cup to having it's making sure that your cup is filled in order to have something to offer meaning that you mm -hmm. practice self-love first four of cups is about feeling oh it was it was in reversal okay that makes more sense i was just like okay so four of cups feeling angels what's the, what's the word for that apathy, indifference, um, maybe even depression, feeling grumpy, feeling like the five of cups, but in less sorrow, just really bummed, you know, conflicted, afflicted, just like, kind of with your head turned away, like, lost in that thought, almost like a soft core version of the nine of swords, mm-hmm. Like your nine of swords on a good day. <laughs> that's what I think that's what that is, the four of cups, right? But it's in reverse, which means that you're moving away from that, obviously, because the chariot came and then your offer of love. So it's like we're going back in time to the process behind it. But that's a release. This is the emotional breakthrough, right? So that the abundance of self can um, really pour out. We have the eagle here, which is all about leadership as well, and taking the charge, exercising form discipline for stability mm -hmm. that emergence mm -hmm. almost like diving mm -hmm. um, into one's growth yay hooray for us <laughs> we have validation here we have two also that's also um an indication for gemini maybe uh the twins in um the devil energy is emerging breaking through emerging like groundbreaking almost like an emergence like this outpour you see of it, it's an emergence for real <laughs> for real believe me i'm <laughs> just messing around okay then we have the moon oh wait no 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 one two three four five six. wait four five this is <coughs> excuse me um this is a blend of the seven of swords and the moon so there's deceit there's some lies Ooh, okay because so we're moving back in time here i picked up the cards wrong actually i don't think that was a mistake it's meant to tell us that the only thing we need to look back for is ourselves to watch our own back uh, be our own supporting role by revisiting our shadows that dim our shine as they pull before us rather than fall behind us so what resonates for me is spirit giving us the end goal because we may be going through such hard times that we can't even visualize what Ten of Cups could mean. Then it softly traces the steps back to where we are to give us hope that it can happen. So spirit is showing us what the path to freedom looks like. Perhaps it is to alleviate anxiety and show that it's safe to take it. Okay, so deceit lies, things to be uncovered, so much more to see in reflection of the moon, which is like a submerged sun, basically, um, all the shadows lying mm -hmm. with that emotional value, like water and fire, like opposing aspects in reference to the moon. You see how it's funneled into here? 
that the true meaning behind the moon is something that lies beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really your sun aspect within its shadows. Mm -hmm. um, also submerged within an opposing like water and oil. That doesn't really truly make sense, you know? We're coming into new terms. There's like almost like a mismatch. That's why there's maybe a little conflict in whatever we're transitioning to. That we're almost boxed into this Four of Swords energy. What's Four of Swords anyway? I forgot. Four of Swords. Help me out. Oh, healing. Yeah. Um, so we're undergoing healing. Yeah. In the moonlight. Almost like um, within self. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. And yeah, the stability. The point of stability. Mm -hmm. It's pointing upwards. There's a separate triangle here. Um, that's meant to point upwards as above mm -hmm. so below funneled into below good for us okay with that understanding of um, self-defeating purposes the self-deceit as well as just the deceit that's uh, also propelled to us from the universe almost the boomerang effect of how we are within when we experience this deceit on the outskirts, we know that there's a serious problem going on on the inside. But our normal inclination is to see the outskirts outside of us, which left us in this Four of Cups energy. When we realize that it funneled also within, we turned it upside down over here and, and we had that breakthrough. Now we're able to gain traction, okay, because this was healing in itself, creating foundations necessary. Now we have the ability to gain traction and to exhibit love, that offer of love. What does that mean? Well, we are able to take command, defeating these demons, and then lead up to this 10 out of 10 quality, like this ace multiplied, magnified by our own harmonization mm -hmm, with the divine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that it? Is that it, angels? Okay, bottom of the deck. We have justice, but it was in reverse. Okay. Why was justice in reverse? Here's justice first off. Mm -hmm. This is classic of justice, though. We're still undergoing the process. The process is within transition. Life may feel like it's unfair right now because maybe we're still in our tower moment. Maybe we're still within, or within that first card, okay? Maybe we're still in this, or maybe in this, like transitioning. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we're in this, the before this, which is the tower moments. Mm -hmm. That we want to offer love, but we're... <laughs> We have a few tower moments we need to take care of, okay? Uh, we're still amid them. We're transitioning out of that, even the mindset, yeah? So maybe that's why it still feels like injustice. <laughs> yeah. And the next one, let's just finish it off here, okay, is the magician. The magician looks so happy with what he's doing. He's within his element. It's within his own art form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just like within alchemy. He just doesn't feel pressured like he is working for someone else. This is his element. This is his realm. This is his world. And he's not pressured by time. Because he realizes there's only so much we have control over. And however long the process takes is however long the process takes. That's just what it comes down to. And you can only do so much. Like you have to get some hours of sleep. Yeah, a decent amount of hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I just start talking and then I realize they're also talking to me. <laughs> uh, okay. I understand. Okay. And I understand now. No need for um, stomping of the feet. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I think that's really it. That's all that I just really wanted to share with you. I mean, these are pretty powerful. We have four really good, I mean, there are really good cards in context. But you have some, we have some really powerful major arcana here. Especially with the prefix title, if not the subtitle to this. 
what was it, the Four of Wands, but it was after receiving insights of the devil and seeing the saving grace and being drawn together. You know, it might feel like a ball and chain, like you're thrown into this ocean with a ball and chain. But, the, I mean, let's say if, if you were in a relationship, extracurricular, maybe that also can be a visualization of what's going on within, that you kind of feel like you're sinking and there's more to that than the swimming part and is over um, one is um, overpowering the other one motion is I feel like it's because um, uh, there's there's another way to say this angels so you don't blame the other side if the other side is falling okay I think that was it that was um exception which is you know just because we're bound and one might be mi misaligned or showing indications of misalignment you don't blame that other side you two are together you two are bound if there's an expression of commitment there's a direct implication of ownership mm -hmm. You are part of that foundation. A table doesn't stand on two legs. Think about that four of wands energy. I feel like that's it. Also, one more thing. The three of wands is also indicated here. More pronounced. One, two, three on the table legs. The fourth one is obviously there. It could be or could not be. But the three of wands is an indication of waiting for your ships to come in. So this is manifestation mode. This is where we should be at. Loving our element um, mastering it because we have something to show to the world we're obviously um, a lot more um, drawn in to the magician than norm right it's almost like an overhead view like this is like a real magician like he's about to do a magic trick trick right? within close proximity to observing his magical ways what he can do what he can manifest and that's really meant we're not meant to be show dogs, but meant to showcase what we can offer to this world. Know what it truly is and master it lovingly. Bringing that to the table, not just yours, but the shared platform for others to learn from, to grow from. Mm -hmm. Look how stable he is. Shoulder width apart. Mm -hmm. And the two of pentacles, that's balance, the diamonds. Mm -hmm. And then the sense of abundance at the base of his feet. Mm -hmm. That also speaks of long range abundance. The perspective view is legacy, like long term, like you built a seed back there. That was your last show. This is just a view, a window to seeing what you can do. Planning the seed for future generations. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. And this one doesn't cheat. Do you see how his um, sleeves are um, cuffed in? So no tricks up his sleeves, mm -hmm. or her sleeves. And I think that is it. I think we're going to close out the reading with this. Oh, one more thing. Remember to expand your tools of precision, you see. Usually there's a simplification in the tools that the um, magician works with. But here we see different forms of it. So it's... Um, not just using flat out discernment but as an example, but knowing which tools, like what kind of precision is needed for each um, area of interest. Mm -hmm. We're not going to call it obstacles. What else? Yeah, I think that's, that's it. Thanks, everybody. Um, yes, he also, he's not getting distracted. He's looking at his assistant so he's not doing this alone mm -hmm. yeah he's kind of doing this alone like he's at the table but he has supporting figures so it's important to establish that as well yeah okay thanks very much everyone 33 33 on the clock let's go ahead and thank our angels and spirit they helped me get out of whatever it is i was in <laughs> I was just like kind of flipping through these cards almost and it, like cutting the deck and it came to the ten of swords when we were talking just now and it's kind of crazy. So anyway, everything's right on point as far as getting me out of and that's when that card came up. So 
I hope you are well. I hope that helped. And I will see you again later. Okay. Good night.